Hello. Today we are doing Chapter 3, Section 2 in Algebra 1. Our essential question is, how can you determine whether a function is linear or nonlinear? This will be a riveting lesson. Right about now, you're probably going, gosh, I wonder what the difference is between linear and nonlinear. Pretty basic. Linear, it's going to be a straight line. Nonlinear, it's not. So that first one, the graph's not a line. It's not linear. B, it's a line. It's linear. It really is that easy. Um, on this one, instead of giving it to us as a graph, they're giving it to us as a table. And they're asking, does the table represent a linear or nonlinear function? Well, look at your x's and your y's. You're jumping up by 3 each time for your x's. You're going down by 6 each time in your y's. So the rate of change is constant. It is linear. On this one, that rate of change is not constant. It is not linear. Did anybody think of another way to do this? Maybe graph those ordered pairs and just visually check to see if that was linear or nonlinear? That is another approach that you could take, especially if you're a real visual person. You might want to, you might want to sketch that graph really quick. So take a second, hit pause, try these four on your own when you think you have the answers. Hit play and check yourself. Of course, that's a line. No, that's got two lines. That's not linear. The rate of change is constant. It is linear. Now, as x increases by 1, y decreases by different amounts. Not linear. So, Sometimes you're given a formula, and you're going to be asked to figure out there if it is linear or not. And this is probably going to be actually a little bit more common. So linear, you're going to be able to write it in the form of y equals mx plus b. So if you cannot write it to make it look like y equals mx plus b, it is not linear. So y equals the square root of x, y equals 3 to the x, y equals 2 over x, and x squared minus y equals 0 are not linear functions. Pretty much, if you ever have a square root, a variable in the exponent, or a variable in the de denominator, or one of your variables is being squared, you will not have a linear relationship. So take a second, try answering these three on your own, hit pause when you think you have the right answer, hit the play button and check yourself. Number six, I think they're trying to trick you a little, but if you look, that's a number in the denominator. That's not a variable in the denominator. So yeah, that one is linear. So kind of the concept summary of um, representations of functions. You can have an input-output table, a mapping diagram, or a graph. You have words. You have equations. Lots of different ways to represent functions. All of these right here mean exactly the same thing. It's just a different way of showing it. All right. Discrete and continuous domains. They're giving you a fancy word here for discrete or for continuous domains and discrete domains. Don't, don't worry about the vocabulary on this one. It's pretty easy to memorize. Discrete, it's going to be in sections. It's going to be in intervals. Continuous sounds exactly like it is. There's no stopping points. It's continuous. 
If you notice here, we have individual points on the number line. So that means only one, only two, only three, only four, only five are the integers that are part of this domain. On the bottom one, it's continuous. Uh, our domain, domain includes 1.1, 1 1.11, 1 1.11111. There's an infinite number of points from 1 to 5. So the linear function y equals 15.95x represents the cost y in dollars of x tickets for a museum. Each customer can buy a maximum of four tickets. Find the domain of the function. Is the domain discrete or continuous? Explain. And then we want to graph the function using its domain. Well, because you can't buy part of a ticket, it's going to be discrete. You can buy 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 tickets, but you can't buy 1.5 tickets. That doesn't work that way. Then we're going to make an input-output table and graph it. And if you were to draw a line, that would be linear. Take a second, hit pause. Try this one on your own. When you think you've got the answer, hit play. On this one, it's discrete because the number of DVDs must be a whole number. Same thing, you can't buy part of a DVD. A cereal bar contains 130 calories. The number of calories consumed is a function of the number B of bars eaten. So as B increases by 1, C increases by 130. That rate of change is constant, so it is a function. So part B, we want to find the domain of the function. Is the domain discrete or continuous? Well, you can eat part of a cereal bar, so it is continuous. In part C, we want to graph the function using its domain. So we make an input-output, and there is our graph. Number of bars eaten, number of calories consumed. All right, try doing problems 9 and 10 on your own. Hit pause when you think you have the answer. Go ahead and hit play and check your answers. This one is discrete because the number of stories must be a whole number. You can't have one and a half stories. It is a linear function. The rate of change is constant. It's going down by 2.5 gallons per minute. Whenever you see per, it's usually a keyword that that's a rate of change. And that's going to be a constant number. So find the domain. This is going to be continuous because it's continuously draining for a part of a minute. It doesn't just drain all of it at minute one, all of it at minute two, all of it at minute three. You can have parts of a minute. So this one's going to be continuous. And if I were to graph it, this is what it looks like. Every two minutes, or actually every minute, it's going down by 2.5, so at 2 minutes, it's gone down 5 gallons. After 8 minutes, it is empty. All right. Do what we are going to skip this one at the moment. And we are going to end there. Those were real-life examples. And because I will, I'm not here to check your work, can't really go through that, but if you want to come into Math Lab or iPass, you are more than welcome. Hope you enjoyed.